colour for a while again. Just going to give a few minutes to um, allow some of you to come on. You can give me a like or a love or a comment to let me know you're here. Hi Louise. Hi honey. Ah. Oh. Another lovely Sunday in lockdown. So what have we all been up to today? Hello Jess. So. I've got six of you on. I'm just going to wait a few minutes. So what, what, uh, what things have we been doing today in our, what are we on nearly, f what are we on now? Is it week five? Coming to week five of lockdown. So another day closer to freedom. That's what I keep reminding myself. Another day closer to getting our life spike and some sort of normality from this uh, from this craziness so uh, I'm here to talk to you about because obviously I'm on link active so thank you for Joe and the link active team for making this possible for me to come and just share a few tips and tools techniques to help you through this emotional roller coaster of a time so I know we all need it. Hi, hi Cuddy, hello Julie. Yeah, so I am, um, I mean, from I don't know about you, but every day is different. Some of these feelings, one day you're feeling amazing and really positive. The next day you can be just so down or scared, anxious. So many emotions flying around and we can't seem to escape it, can we? Because it's everywhere. Everywhere we look, everybody we talk to is talking about it. But on the plus side, I don't know about you again, but I feel the sense of connection all around the world is just, it's just been amazing. You know, last night I had a great night in with all these DJs, all these like famous DJs and they're all doing their thing for nothing and raising money for the NHS. And I think that's amazing. I had a really good night flicking from, I went back to 90s and then I went into, we have, um, there's a little group for the workshop DJs. So we've got, we had Dave Gladwin in there last night. Hopefully I'm going to be in there as well soon if I can uh, get hold of some decks so that is a really good group to to get in there so what works up DJ's lockdown I think is it Des I don't know but it's really good some some banter in there um Dave was spinning a few 80s tunes last night so I think you know everyone's coming together so much online stuff music yeah nobody can take music away from us can they so we're always going to have music, we're always going to have nature and we're always going to have somebody, somebody else to connect with. And I think that is so important, so important to to keep some sort of connection rather than, you know, talk to people, talk to your friends, Facebook friends, family, pick the phone up, go on live, do your FaceTime, whatever, but just keeping in touch not keeping all of this stuff in this anxiety the way that you feel because the more we keep it in or push it to the back of his mind like i mentioned last week you know we a lot of us which i i used to do you'd, you'd feel this this thing that you didn't want to feel you'd feel anxious or you'd feel you know conscious or scared and you'd just be like right okay what can i do to to stop me feeling that and you just push it to the back of your mind or have a drink, or I know a lot of me, you know, as well. We do turn to things that make us feel. Hi, Adana. 
things that make us feel good. Now, with food, a lot of my clients, a lot of friends, um, they're all moaning because they can't stop eating. Can't stop eating. I think most of the steps I've done must be to fridge and back, you know, because it's like with not much more, well, not much else we, we can do. <laughs> well, there is, there is, but, you know, food. And I think what happens when we get in a state where we're stressed and we're anxious, a subconscious mind, it automatically kicks in. It's like, okay, what can I do to make her feel better? What can I do to make him feel better? Food. So it reminds us of all gorgeous food and we sort of eat our emotions yeah Desi I know our Nick made a cake the other day and I've had probably seven eighths of it well I've had to chuck rest in bin to save me eating it but because it tastes nice and it makes you feel good in that moment but then when you've polished the cake off or you've polished all the pizza off you just feel crap with yourself don't you and you feel like you feel like a pig and why have I done that and it's a cycle so what we're actually doing, we're actually eating our emotions. So what we need to do is to try and pause really, to be like, right, okay, I'm about to gorge myself or I want to, why do I want to eat this food? What is this food going to give me? Well, it's going to make me feel good. It tastes nice. It's comforting. Yeah, and that is good. But when it sort of gets out of control and you want to polish the lot off, then it's obviously there's something underneath that, isn't there? We're doing that to numb out our true feelings. So I've had to stop buying the uh, the Biscoff cream because I can eat that by the jar. But the other thing is, you know, this is a this is a time, I'm not going to say unprecedented, I've just said it, but I'm sick of hearing that word. I've never heard of it before this. But we are we're in this, this, this time, it is... We, it's a crisis and we just want comfort, we want to feel safe. So if by us eating that food for that moment, we're going to get that relief from all of this, these awful feelings in food, that's why we're doing it. And it's only temporary, but what we need to do, yeah, chocolate in the evening. And why do we eat that chocolate? Because it tastes good. You know, it's the... The, the melting in your mouth and it's I had a thing with Nutella I'll you know I'm not I, I don't care I'll tell you about it I was um going through jars of Nutella like I don't know what this was a few years ago before I got into all of this anyway I had some of the tapping what we did last week around this Nutella and it all went back to I when I was young we used to go and get 10 pence mixers there was a little shop down our street and she used to sell these little Tiny little thing, you probably remember my Nutella with a little spatula in, about 7p. And I used to scrape it all out and turn it inside out. And I just loved the way it made me feel. The the velvetiness, the, the taste of it, the sweetness. And I was just, uh, I just loved it. So my subconscious had clung on to that because it made me feel good. So then later on, you know, as I'd grown up, and I was having these bad times and I was down and whatever so it it sort of my subconscious were bringing it back up so I was I weren't eating it by the little 7p mini things I was eating jars of it so my friend says right come on let's do some of this this therapy this tapping therapy I do and that was in 2015 I think we did that and I've never done it since I've never I can eat it now but it doesn't it doesn't bother me because it came to it came to light that because when we're tapping, it's um, helping us, it's calming your nervous system, basically. And it's allowing us to go into a subconscious, to dig a little deeper to why we feel like we do. So it came to light that it was reminding me of how I felt when I was little. So my subconscious was bringing that up and I was reenacting that. But anyway, I did, it was something I didn't want to do. I didn't think I had any control over it. But yeah, I've not done it since. So, you know, emotional eating, it is a thing. And we can address it. And the only way we're going to do this is to actually sit with us feelings and ask, you know, why am I eating this chocolate? If you're having more than, if you don't feel as though you're in control of it, you know, like with biscuits, if you feel like you need to eat, eat the full packet, then there's something going on there, isn't there? So we could do a little bit of, of tapping on that. So 
anyway, so how how is everybody feeling at the minute? What what sort of feelings have you been experiencing this last week with the announcement of the extension of the lockdown of the three weeks? How does that make you feel? Yeah, it is nice. Chocolate is nice, <laughs> Donna, but, you know, it's like when we start to feel shame and guilt over eating too much of it, then it's like, well, why? You know, what, what, am, I, what am I covering up? But if you're in control of it and you're just like eating it, that's fine. It only comes a problem, like with me, when uh, we're eating it for the wrong reasons. So how's everybody feeling out of 10 today? 10's been the best. Let's have some numbers. The comments are slightly delayed, so I just want to know, um, you know how you're feeling. What are you doing to manage your emotional well-being? I think I mentioned it last week as well. You know, everybody goes on about as physical, how important it is to uh, to keep on top, keep keep moving, keep um, as physical health in tip top condition. Eight, that's good, Louise. But we don't really talk about as mental health as much. It is not as you know as, as such a. I think it's getting better. It's getting more acceptable to talk about it and to you know to to voice it and there's so much more um help and advice out there as well you, yeah we feel safe at home it's not um what did we say there you're hurrying back from the supermarkets makes you anxious yeah okay so you've got a worry of that this this sort of like, a bit like PTSD, isn't it? So what we're experiencing now, which is totally out of the norm, so you have got a fear that you will, this will, you know, even after all of this has blown over or we've got back to normal, that it's going to still have an impact on you. You've been feeling sad, so sad and anxious. Is it sad? What is it? The, the sadness of the loss of because we can't see as as loved ones. Is that connection? Just writing some notes. It's sad for it's a lot of sadness for a lot of reasons. You know, the people losing their lives and all of this. But what we've got to focus on, if we can all do our own bit individually to keep us self, keep our own moods stress levels down then that's all we can do so the thing is we've got to start to look at i am feeling sad or i'm feeling anxious about things are they in my control or are they not because it uses a whole lot more energy time and energy focusing on something that makes us feel stressed and anxious now we need to sort of protect our own energy levels for ourself and those around us, we need to be at our best self. So if we are, you know, constantly feeling stressed and anxious, it makes us irritable. You know, it makes us mardy. We can't, we're not sleeping. It affects everything. So all we can do is start to look at what am I worrying about? Is this within my control? What can I do to change this? You know, what am I, what can I change or stop doing? To help me to feel better. Limiting the news. Newspapers. If there's somebody who's bothering you. Who's on you know Facebook. And they're constantly putting negative stuff on. Conspiracy theories. You know. They're making you feel crap about yourself. Just get rid of them. You know. It's, it's our. We've got to take responsibility. Missing people. Yeah. Music. Donna. Yeah. Music can lift your spirits in an instant. Music, like I said before, nobody's going to take that away from us, are they? So, missing seeing people, missing hugging. I don't know about you if you're a hugger. I am missing hugging. I'm missing working. I'm missing seeing my clients in person. I am trying to do as much as I can to still reach out online. This is why I'm doing this, um, you know, to to hopefully help you to release some of the stress because stress is a build-up of negative energy 
So the work that I do, it's all about looking at what am I feeling? Is this feeling making me feel good or not? And what can I do about it? So the EFT, I think what we're going to do is do just some uh, mindfulness, a little bit of relaxation um, to bring some calm. I'm missing seeing you, Jess, as well. I'm missing seeing everybody. It is kind of, it's really sad, but it also, I think, for me, it's made me realise how grateful that I am for a lot of things as well, which I'll never take for granted again, because we just never know when these things can be taken from us, do we? So I think, for me, there was a quote that I saw, interrupt anxiety with gratitude. So when we're focusing on, so what we focus on, we're giving our time and energy to that. Are we focusing on fear? Are we focusing on the what might happen? What if? What if that? What if life's never the same again? We don't know. We just do not know, do we? So all we do know is right here, right now, that we are healthy, we are alive, and we are able to manage our stress. So all of these things, what might be, these stories that we concoct in as mind, as mind's time travelling into the future, you know, and, and all of this stuff. It might even be bringing up all this that's going on, old stuff. You know, for those people who suffer with anxiety already, this may be enhancing that. Or maybe, I mean, I spoke to a few people and they've said they're not as anxious because... All of this, what's going on, it's like we're all in it together. So we've got this, this connection because everybody understands, everybody's feeling it at some level because we're all experiencing it together, which is quite comforting. Is that the right word? That, you know, that knowing that if we are to express ourselves to somebody, they are going to understand you. They're not going to brush it off or tell you that you've, you're being stupid because they get it because they're, they are in it too. So this could be, you know, a, like a reassuring thing, knowing that if you do speak to somebody, they are going to understand what you're going through because they're feeling it too. So my first tip is speak. You know, speak how however you're feeling, tell somebody, talk to somebody, get in touch with me, speak to a friend, go on FaceTime, you know, whatever you need to do, just talk about it, cry. If you're feeling sad, if you're missing somebody, just if you feel like you need to cry, just have a good cry. Let that sadness out. You know how good it feels, when, you know, if you've, you've ever had a good cry before, you've been feeling upset and then you cry it all out and it's just a release. So it's not nothing to be ashamed of crying. You know, we're, we're all going through this absolutely crazy time. So let it out. Grateful for being alive. Exactly. You know, we've got to think all of these these people who have been affected with this, all the poor families that it's leaving behind. So we've got to honour the fact that we are alive. I did a post the other day about being great. I am grateful for two gifts um, that I opened this morning. My eyes... You know, so it is, there's never, you know, a, 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 a more time, better time to, to practice gratitude, interrupt the, the anxious thoughts with that, bring yourself back to, to now, rather than, you know, getting lost in all of these anxious thoughts, these thinking about the future, because we can't control what's, what's going to happen, we can control what's going on with us. So connect with people, speak to someone about how you're feeling, it will help you to feel better, get some, um, try and sleep, try and get, I know this is hard as well, This I've seen loads and loads of people posting about, they're having crazy dreams, <clears throat> I've been waking up at 6am every morning, I made myself go back to sleep this morning though because I didn't feel rested, but the dreams I'm having are mad, I'm dreaming about people from the past or people I don't even know, crazy dreams, but again it's because our brain's trying to process all of this unfamiliar stuff that's happening around us so and it does this when we are sleeping but because there's so much unfamiliar so much to take in and to process 
you know we've been able to recall our dreams more there's some really good articles on it actually um so don't worry about if you are having you know mad dreams or more you're remembering more you're not sleeping as well you're not on your own this is a common thing uh the other thing yeah so sleep is really important food make sure you're nourishing yourself it's so easy to want to to crave and eat that crappy food but that will make us feel rubbish so your body still needs you to look after it and get some healthy food stay hydrated water drink more water um you know a lot of people tending to to want to reach for the the wine which is good it relaxes you but you know again are you do you feel like it's it's becoming a problem do you feel like you're drinking a little bit too much only you knows that you know i'm not here to judge i'm just here to make you aware of there may be other ways to to cope to to help you to um manage the way you're feeling a little bit more sing donna sing music have a dance about move get on joe's live um live exercise classes they're brilliant you know have a dance about go for a walk get out in nature all that kind of thing and then also there is mindfulness so we you know being aware of how you're feeling i absolutely believe in and it has helped me so much over the years i have a journal which i write in that um especially now with all this going on you know it's going to be good to look back on in years to come writing my feelings down about it what's going off the good things that taking the positives out of the day and also writing down the challenges that you're having and what you did to overcome them. So it's a journal. So it's like you just use that to to process your feelings and to look a little little bit deeper into why am I feeling like this? And then you can just you know sit with it. I don't know if you need to, if you want to me meditate or just sit have five minutes. I know think if you've got kids and that it's really really busy. So much pressure on yourselves at the moment having to homeschool them with them all you know 24 7 it must be so hard all the extra pressures but you remember you're not a teacher you've not been trained to do this just do your best and know that that's enough if you do get irritable if you do get stressed that's fine just allow yourself to be stressed for a little while but then also take the time to release that stress so setting your alarm five, ten minutes early before the kids get up or if you've not got kids like me, as soon as I wake up in the morning, I do I make sure I do some breathing, do some deep breaths, do my gratitudes, set myself up for the day, you know, just set what sort of day that I want. So rather than getting up and like, oh, God, another day, I feel anxious. What's today going to bring? You've got to sort of like set the day up, make it work for you. You know, some of you might be thinking, what's she talking about? But it does work setting your day up for you to work for you rather than just going by default. Groundhog Day, you know, Groundhog Day. So, you know, get a routine, some sort of routine. So um, you've got some structure in your day. We all like routine, don't we? You know, we don't like change, but it's been forced upon us. So we've just got to adapt to it for this short period of time until we can get back get back to some sort of normality and we can hug again and we can you know we can connect again and we can go out so Desi I've built up a small group of lads in a chat yeah yeah amazing so supporting each other having that connection even if it's not face to face it's still knowing you've got that support network. It is so important. As human beings, we crave connection. We need the sense of belonging. So the, the feeling alone, this you know, loneliness is, is an awful, awful thing to have to go through. So reaching out, reaching out to others is so, so important. Okay, so I think if you would like to, we can do a little bit of the EFT, which we did last week, if any of you were um, was here last week. This, and I've had some really good feedback from it as well, thank you. Um, a lot of you did go over to my page. So I've had an increase on my likes there. got a few messages and I've just done another one before I've come here. Um, just had a Zoom session 
with a lady, her first time of doing EFT, and she couldn't believe. I said, so we have we, we rate how out of 10, how are you feeling with your anxiety, your stress? If it's a 10, it's really high. So she was a 12. So she was off the scale. Anyway, so after a bit of the tapping, she was she was like, oh my God, I feel so calm. I'm, a, I'm a, about an eight now. So she'd gone down from a 12 to a, an eight and she couldn't believe how calm she felt. Um, and it was amazing to see. So yeah, so if you want to join in with me, I don't know how many of you are on that if you wasn't last week. Just, just give me a like if or a, or a comment if you have tried EFT, if you know about it. Um because I can just run through, give you a little bit of an overview for those. It's really simple. It stands for Emotional Freedom Techniques, otherwise known as tapping. Now, this technique, it has got so much evidence. It's science, you know, this has been so much research. I think I showed you this book last week. The science behind tapping. This is just one of the books. It works by calming your nervous system, basically. So when we're stressed, we're in this high alert mode. We 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 just we just think something bad's going to happen. We think we're in danger. So our body's preparing us for survival, to fight or run from this danger, fight or flight. Okay. So with the tapping, it reverses that. So tapping on specific points of your body called meridians, sends a calming signal to the emotional part of your brain that it, to relax, that it's safe to relax. So all of this anxious energy that we can feel in his bodies, it starts to dissolve. Now with energy, so we've got, we have, you know, when we're positive, we're full of positive energy, we're feeling good. We're, we're up the scale, you know, we're feeling, we're feeling good, we're feeling, um, positive so it's when we are anxious or when we're stressed we're feeling sad we've got all of these emotions which we call negative emotions and this these drainers they drain our body the drainers they make us feel crap lethargic we've got no motivation we can't bother to do anything we just want to eat we just like self-sabotage don't we um we, we can get into a little bit of a, of a zone pity party i know i used to be like that so this is about, right, okay, no, taking responsibility. I'm glad that you helped last week to say, yeah, you know, I thank you for, for trying it. Um, so, yeah, it's about taking responsibility because the only person that can get us out of this shit that we're in, that the way that we're feeling is us. There's no matter how much I say to you, right, are you doing this? Are you doing this? You know, why don't you try this? If you're not going to, if you're stuck in this mindset of, no, I want to be stuck in this negative mindset. I there's nothing's going to work. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. So you've just got to be open minded and willing to try. You know, do you would you rather be stressed or would you would you rather be more focused and calm and feeling stronger and ready to take on the day? Because I know what I choose. You know, we want to feel better, don't we? We want to feel that we are able to cope more. So Hello, our Rachel's here, look. Okay, so, EFT. I am going to do the talking. So, what I what I um, say to you, because I can't connect with you and I, I can't see you all or speak to you directly. So, I've got some, some things here, what you've been commenting on. So, it's all about, with the EFT, it's all about speaking our truth about how we feel, not trying to push it down and avoiding it. or Because when we say, oh, I'm just going to put that to the back of my mind, literally it goes to the back of his mind, but it doesn't go away. It just gets stored there, stored in the subconscious. And we keep pushing stuff back and back and back. A bit like a computer. It's just Eventually it's just going to get full. There's going to be no storage left. So we feel like we've had it up to here and we can't take any more. And we end up having a massive wobble or a breakdown or whatever because we can't cope with all of this emotional baggage that we're holding on to and dragging around with us on a daily basis. So with all this stuff that's going on, it's it's added to it, hasn't it? 
but it's you know it's in the back of his mind and we're always absorbing stuff in from everywhere everybody else you know if they're feeling scared and worried we're going to take that on from them as well you know we're emotional beings so we cannot help but empathize and with other people when they're feeling stuff so we will react to how they're feeling so that's going to change the way that we feel inside so taking on other people's stuff is a big one you know and it's uh it's um it's crazy times at the minute so the more that we can do to help ourselves to feel a little bit calmer and more in control and stronger and more resilient to get through each day that is you know how much better is that going to be um the an, another one as well that i saw something about you know there's all these stars and everything saying oh you need to um, take use this time productively go and learn a new language go and do this go and do that it's like Hang on a minute, love. I'm, I'm, I just need to uh, get myself through the day. You know, focus on that. And this can make you feel guilty that you're not doing enough, not being productive enough. You know, then you start to feel ashamed. You start to feel guilty with yourself. You start to feel lazy. Is anybody else feeling like that? I had a day like that the other day. I'm like, oh, I've got all this time on my hands. I feel like I should be doing something. I feel like I should be doing more. You know, so, and it can make us feel... And that will affect our self-esteem. If we are telling ourselves that we're lazy or we're not doing enough, and we, you know, there's all the we've got our wonderful NHS that's keeping us, keeping us up. They are our foundation, you know. And then we we see all these stories, and it's like, oh, I'm not doing enough. I should be doing more, but we can't. We're not in that position to do any more apart from, you know, adhere to to the rules of what the government has set out for us. So beating yourself up for being not being productive enough or not learning a new language or not learning how to do backflips in all this spare time we've got it's just ridiculous so do not get pulled in by all of that you should be doing more what you should be doing is focusing on on your emotional well-being and getting yourself through each day that is what is important Okay, so we've got a few more joined us. Thank you, guys. I don't know how many of you uh, was here last week. So I've just been talking a few things about, you know, your emotional health and why it is important, as well as your physical health. It's important to, you know, to have that balance, isn't it? So keep yourself moving. Get in with these exercise classes that Joe's putting on. They're amazing and he's doing them for free, you know, and he's giving to the community. And this is what I'm here for, to help you, give you a few tips and, and stuff to help you feel a little bit more positive and a little bit more in control of your emotional well-being. So for me, I think, you know, we brush his teeth every day. We just do that, don't we? Because if we didn't brush his teeth every day, they'd probably fall out or, you know, it wouldn't, we wouldn't have a very nice breath, would we? You know, it wouldn't be very nice. So, so why don't we give as much attention to our thoughts? our feelings you know give that a, a house like an emotional housekeeping i call it so when we can start to tune in like okay so how am i feeling today i'm feeling stressed today and giving it a number and asking going a little bit deeper so why am i feeling like this as what somebody just said to me have i just seen something on the news have i just had a thought about something in the future which i can't control so just being aware of it and then we can do some of this work to help to calm his nervous system down, to bring us back into our bodies. You know, it's when our mind starts racing off into the future, creating all of these stories. And they do say that 80% of what we think about, worry about, never happens anyway. But we use so much energy and time concocting these stories, don't we? You know, so why not save that energy for for more um, useful and productive things like making us self feel better. So, right, okay, so everyone, then we'll do a little practice. Okay, so I'll just run through again for those that have joined. So emotional freedom technique, EFT. I've been doing this for six years. I'm also a clinical hypnotherapist and I, I do all the um, sorts of like mindfulness and other tools and techniques, therapies in my uh, mindset coaching to help you to <clears throat> feel more in control, more empowered 
and to really just cope better with day day to day life and release anxiety. I work on a deeper level with my clients, you know, to get to the root. But with this, we what we're working on is how we're feeling right now with the current epidemic, pandemic, whatever it is, the current crisis, which we're all feeling in one way or another. It differs from day to day. So we'll just close his eyes. Everybody just close your eyes. And I'm just taking it that you are somewhere where you're not going to be disturbed. So you can just allow yourself to be fully focused, to be fully here. And noticing how you're feeling. Which it can be very difficult for some people to be with your feelings because it can sometimes feel too scary. But with the EFT... It's going to send, it sends a signal to your brain, to the emotional part of your brain called the amygdala. It sends a calming signal for it to relax and it rewires it. I know that sounds crazy, but just go with it. So closing your eyes, and I just want you to take a deep breath in through your nose. And I want you to just think about all of this stuff that's going on, the extension of the lockdown. Three more weeks, not being able to see as friends, as family, not being able to hold them, hug them. For some, you know, not being able to work like myself. I've not been able to see my mum, who's really struggling at the moment. All of this stuff, it's quite emotionally challenging. So giving it a number out of 10, just roughly out of 10, what sort of impact, If you know, if you're really, really stressed, really anxious, it's a 10 or it can be higher. Just give that a number in your mind now. And we do this so we can monitor it once we've done a little bit of this technique. So you can see for yourself how much it has lowered. Okay, so we're taking yourself out of the stress mode into the relaxation mode by tapping on certain points around the body, which has been used for thousands of years. This is evidence based. So if, if you think, you know, I'm, it's a load of rubbish, just go with it anyway. You never know. You never know. So... Okay, so taking another conscious breath in through your nose, nice and slow. And as you're breathing out, I just want you to notice how far your shoulders are up to your ears and just release them gently, letting any tension just be released. Just giving you time, yourself this time to relax, even if it's for a few minutes. So again, on when you're breathing in, and slowly breathing out and notice how your stomach feels. Does that feel kind of knotty? Does it feel tight? Does it feel tense? And just allowing that to soften. Just allowing all of your muscles to relax. Because this is something we can control. You know, if I say ten, I want you to tense all of your body. Tense it all up right now. Squeeze your fists. Tense it all up and relax. Noticing any sensations in your body. Rolling your shoulders back. If you may need to just move your head around, just releasing your hands, just letting go, just releasing. Imagine that you're just shaking off that tension and giving yourself this time to, to start to relax. Now, I want you to start tapping. Those, those of you that have tapped before, we're going to start to tap those that you haven't. So we tap on this side, the side of your hand with your fingertips. OK, so these acu acupressure points are all down. Oh, they're all over his body and they work, you know, along in conjunction with his nervous system and everything else to help us to feel calmer. So just tapping, gently tapping on the side of the hand, repeating after me out loud or in your mind. So even though I feel really stressed right now, I choose to accept how I feel and I'm going to allow myself to relax anyway. So even though I feel sad at the minute, just add your own words in, whatever you're feeling, I can feel all this sadness, this loss. I'm feeling so scared. This anxiety, when I think about going to the supermarket, when I think about how life is, 
when I think about all of this loss, when I think about all the things that are missing from my life, when I think about all of the changes to life as I knew it, it brings up all of this emotion. But I'm going to accept how I'm feeling and maybe I can relax anyway. Maybe this tapping thing will work. I'm open to trying it, to believing it. So this part of me that's feeling anxious or sad right now, I'm allowing that part of me to be there. But I'm going to allow some of this anxious, nervous energy to be released from my body. Okay, so notice, just move to the top of your head, just tapping around the top of your head. Eyes closed if you can, because I'm going to tell you where you need to tap. So just notice in your body, where would you say that you can feel this anxious, the, the, the anxiety or the sadness? Do you feel it in your throat? Do you feel it in your chest? Is it tight? Is it in your head? Is it in your stomach? Does it feel knotty? Just whatever it is, just allow it to be there. Now I want you to move just in between, just where, in between your eyebrows, at the end of your eyebrow, just gently tapping on there and acknowledging it. All of this stress in my body. All of this stress that I can feel right now. I'm going to allow it to be there. And I wonder if I can allow myself to relax. So moving to where your eyebrow ends at the side near your temple there. So just tapping on there. All of this anxiety, I can feel it in my body. So naming it, where is it? But I choose to breathe into that area now and I choose to allow myself to relax a little. It's only emotion. So moving under the eye, on the bony part. All of this emotion that's stuck in my body. This emotion, I can feel it, this anxiety in my stomach or wherever you can feel it. What does it feel like? Is it heavy? How long has it been there? Just move to under the nose. How big is this emotion that seems to be hanging around? Give it a colour, give it a shape. Just move now to the chin. All of this anxiety, this big, heavy ball or whatever it is in my body. It's a ball of emotion that I don't want anymore because I've been focusing on all of these things that I'm worried about. Moving to the collarbone, your collarbone there, just tapping both hands gently all across. All of these worries, all of these anxieties, not seeing my family, not knowing, I've not got any answers. We've never had to go through anything like this in as life before and it makes me feel so anxious. And I'm worried that the anxiety is going to stay with me when it's all over. But choosing to focus on things that haven't happened yet is just creating more anxiety. So I choose to let that go. I choose to release all this anxious energy that I'm holding on to in my body. Moving to the top of your head again. I am safe right here. I choose to remind myself that I am safe, safe in my body, inside of the eyebrow, safe in my house. I am grateful that I am safe right now. Moving to the outside of your eyebrow, I'm releasing this anxiety. I'm going to allow myself to process it. I'm going to allow this sadness to be released under the eye. I'm going to allow all of this sadness or whatever you're feeling, this anger, this resentment, this anxiety in my body. It's just energy and I can change that. So under the nose, moving to the, that part. As I honour how I feel, because this is the truth of how I'm feeling right now, but it might change tomorrow. So I'm going to let it go and I'm going to allow myself to relax. Just moving to the collarbone again. I'm going to allow this awful anxiety, this sadness that I've been feeling. 
I'm going to thank it for being here, but I'm going to choose to let it go now because right here, right now, I'm okay. I'm supported. I'm loved. I'm alive. And I'm going to choose to relax. I'm going to choose to take responsibility of how I feel and put these practices in place now to feel more in control. Moving back to the side of the hand. Taking a deep breath in. So closing your eyes now and just listen to, listen to, to me. I will guide you through. Okay, so this remaining feeling in my body. As I breathe in to wherever I feel it in my body and I choose to let it go. As I choose a different feeling, I choose to feel calm now. Deep breath in through your nose, breathing into your stomach or wherever it feels tight, tense or stressed. You may want to bring some colour into that. Red is a good one. Not red for anger, red for stability, safety. Just feeling safe. Thanking your body for allowing you to feel safe right now. As I notice this tension, this stress in my body. And I give myself permission to release it. To allow it to soften. Just imagine now that any stress that is there, imagine it's an ice cube. And as you're breathing in, it's starting to melt. And imagine that you can feel like all these sensations running around your body. Imagine all this energy, this emotion as it's starting to flow and it's starting to release all of this anxiety as you're bringing yourself into now, into your body, right here, right now, because this is all we've got control of. The more that we focus on what might be or the what ifs. So just tapping round on this side of the hand. So even if all these things do come true that I'm worrying about, I choose to know that I'll cope. So even if all of these things that I've been making up in my mind, all these crazy stories, even if they do happen, which it's likely they won't, I know I'll survive and I'll be okay. Because right here I'm okay, I am safe. And this is just anxious energy. And it's draining me and it's exhausting me. So I choose to feel calm. I choose to feel calm amongst all of this chaos that is happening outside of me. Because the truth is, my power lies within me. I can choose to feel calm or I can choose to feel anxious. I can choose to focus on what's going on with me or I can choose to focus on what's going on with the world. And I choose calm. Top of the head, I choose to feel calm, allow myself to relax, allow this remaining anxiety or stress or sadness to be released. It's just emotion, collarbone, it's energy that I can let go of or I can choose to hold on to it, but by holding on to it, it's just making me feel more stressed. And why would I choose to do that to myself? Why would I choose to make myself more stressed when I can choose to let it go? Stop tapping now and just rest your hands. Eyes closed if they're not closed. And taking a nice deep breath in. Listening out for any sounds that you can hear around. Notice any sensations on the inside of your body. How do you feel? Do you feel lighter? Do you feel calmer? Do you feel more relaxed? Do you feel more stressed? Let me know how you're feeling. Just shaking it out, just moving your body about, rolling your shoulders back, just uh, shaking your hands out, just being aware of your feet, just coming back into your body. So open your eyes when you're ready. So that was just a, a basic practice on some of the feelings that you've told me that you're experiencing right now. So tapping is just amazing. The more that you do it, 
you know all of these points that we tap on they are natural responses as humans that we would go to to calm self you know in stressful times like you know we would just go there when we're like stuff like that so it's all this is all evidence-based there's so much science around it you know so just keep at it just keep tapping come to follow my page i've got a private group i'm doing you know lots of stuff i want to help as much as i can to help you to feel more in control and more you know calmer as, as calm as, as we possibly can be so it's all about yeah i feel like this you know what and it's okay and i'm not going to put pressure on myself because i feel like this but i'm going to feel it and i'm going to let it go because by holding on to it we just it's just like self-sabotage we're just punishing yourself but until we know that we can change it you know we don't know this do we it's only since i came across eft six years ago and then hypnotherapy you know, it's, it's changed my life. And if you stick with it, and if you, you know, look into it, you want to look into it more, get in touch with me. There's so much on YouTube, there's all sorts. Um, So I hope that has helped you a little bit. Please, you know, if you've got any questions, anything specific that you would like to have a, an intro session on, I'm doing the one-to-ones over Zoom, over WhatsApp, whatever you prefer um, to do. So I do hope it's helped. If you can just... Just pop me a, a like or a comment, because the comments, again, there's, there's a delay on them somewhere. Um, if you just want to let me know how that was for you. Or has it gone down, the ones that rated it before out of 10? Has it gone down? Do you feel a little bit calmer? Do you feel more relaxed? Because this is all going to be so good for, to, what's the word, strengthen your immune system. When we are stressed... We're in this, uh, it's affecting his immune system because our body does not need our immune system to fight or flight. So it takes the sort of, the gas off the pedal with that, you see. So it's weakening in it. So the more that we can calm and be more in control as the immune system is going to be, it's so much more stronger. And we need this in case, if we do get this virus, we need our immune system. It's imperative. We need it to fight for us. So we need to, connect mind and body do everything we can to get through this and we will get through it you know we're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel um stuff's been lifted already in other countries hasn't it and it's i think it's the the stats today look you know about 300 less so you know it, we are getting there normality will resume so i like to see it as one day closer to freedom so being grateful for another day you know, interrupt your anxiety with gratitude. What can I do about the way that I am feeling? Go for a walk. Do one of Joe's classes. You know, go and eat some nice food. Go and bake. Do something. You know, but you don't beat yourself up for not being productive. I don't want to counter thing in this. But, you know, it is up to us to, to look at how we feel and why we're feeling. And clear that out so we can feel a bit better. And we can be better for everyone else around us. Because... For some of us, you know, well, a lot of you know, a lot of us now we we're having we've we've been on lockdown. We're isolated with with family members or with friends or whoever that we're not used to being with for for this amount of time, and that in itself can cause you know stress and and frustration, you know. But it's fine. We're all going through it together. So good. Louise is feeling better. Jess, does it? Yeah, brilliant. Thank you for your feedback. I really appreciate it. So, I wonder, have we got any DJs on tonight? Are we going to, what we're going to do with the rest of his evening? We're going to have a little dance somewhere, get some music on. So, whatever you want to do, we'll go and look back on Joe's um, classes if you're feeling like moving about a bit, if it's, that's gave you a bit more energy. This is all about protecting our energy levels, isn't it? Stress zaps our energy. It drains us, it exhausts us. Tapping will help you to calm down to release that anxious energy so you feel calmer, more in control and more ready to get on with the rest of your day. Feeling more focused, more present, more in your body rather than, you know, your mind time travelling. That's the worst thing we can do. So, hello, JJ, my old mate. OK, so I've not got any comments. Can't see any anyway anymore so i think then what time are we on oh 
Oh, where's that gone? Nearly an hour. My word. Thank you all for joining. Okay, so pop over to my page. If you just put in Melanie Drage, it's tapping into change. Um, I've also got the Zen Zone as well. Um, that's a private group and I do some lives in there. Sell Happy Mail. I've got loads of Happy Mail packages that I am posting out. I've done over 50 of those. Lovely little crystal gemstones and I put a personalised message in for your loved ones that you may be missing. So I've got a range of those. Those are over in, if you go to the Zen Zone, tapping into change. Um, so I can get those sent out on your behalf for you as a lovely little gift, a little um, hug, virtual hug. You can send them you know, just to let them know you, you're missing them, that you love them or whatever message you would like me to put. I can put that in for you. Um, I'll be back here next week, same time next week, hopefully, if Joe will allow it, half past six. So get in touch in the meantime if there's anything specific you want me to address or you've got any questions that I'd like, we can share it then with the group because other people might be having the same sort of challenges. Um, but I know, um, you know, we don't want to sometimes speak up um, when it's public. So send me a private message. I am here. I've got a lot of time on my hands at the minute, so I'm more than happy to help. Oh, thanks, Rach. Yes, I sent it to Rachel's daughter. She got a lovely little crystal package, you know, and it's just lovely to receive some happy mail through the post. And they start from £4. So, oh, I love all the love hearts coming through. Mwah! Thank you, guys. So enjoy the rest of your evening, whatever you're doing. OK, so brush your teeth, notice your thoughts. What can I do to change the way I'm thinking? Get out, move your body, tap. Even if you just want to breathe, five minutes of breathing to bring you back into your body. Mindfulness. Okay, so it's all good stuff. So thanks again and I hope to catch you next week. Okay, bye for now. Bye.